praise the Lord. Today I am continuing to tackle the topic on obedience and honor and particularly to our governing authorities. Our guiding uh, scripture comes from the book of Romans chapter 13 verses 1 to 7. And before we read, I'm going to give you a background of the book of Romans. The book of Romans is an epistle of Paul and it is not praised as the first one among his ep epistles because of the chronological uh, writing dates. No, it is praised as the first one because it's a superlative, excellent episode. It is the episode that gives us the foundation of the Christian doctrines. Things such as justification by faith, atonement, the redemption, and the Gentiles becoming the children of the promise. And that we find in chapter 1 up to chapter 11. Therefore, Paul is writing to Christians that are in Rome. And the majority of the recipients of this letter are Jews Christians. They are Christians who had uh, been dispersed after the persecution in Jerusalem in the time of Nero. They are likely to be the Pirisira and Aquiras, uh, or perhaps some disciples of Jesus Christ who had come to the, uh, to the time of Passover when the disciples were filled by the Holy Spirit after their dispersing it is likely that there are people who went to Rome and founded the Christian church. Paul is not the one who founded it, but he had an interest with this church. Oftentimes, he liked and he has shown interest that he wanted to go to the, to the church of Rome. But it was, it was not possible for him to go there. Therefore, he writes to these people. And I want us to ask ourselves the reason why Paul found it necessary to write to the Jewish people concerning obedience to authority. Number one, Christianity had just emerged. And Christianity was known to be a sect that was formed by rebellious people. The Jews from the time of captivity had been seen as people that were rebellious. If you read in the book of Ezra, chapter 4, you find that uh, they are described as rebellious people who do not listen to the kings. And now the Christianity has emanated. It's a sect that is emanating from the Jews people themselves. And actually somewhere in the book of Acts, they were known to be people who had turned the world upside down. And therefore, in authorities' uh, sight, Christianity was a group that was likely to bring revolt. They were very conscious about the movement of Christianity. And therefore, Paul felt it was important for him to caution the Christians to be obedient to the ruling authorities that were there at that particular time. The other reason why perhaps Paul wrote uh, concerning the our conduct or the conduct of the Romans to the ruling authorities is because Jews had always waited to be ruled by somebody who had come from the Abraham root, uh, a descendant of Abraham. They were looking for a Messiah. And therefore it was likely they do not submit themselves to the ruling authorities that were there at that particular time who were heathens and unbelievers. Paul sees gospel as source of peace, as a religion that teaches peace. If you read through uh, Paul's episodes, he never wanted to start up trouble with the ruling authorities. He never wanted to start trouble concerning the system that, that were there at that particular time. Actually, he admonishes his, his listeners to be subjecting, to be subjective to the ruling authorities and even to the masters that they were working for. And therefore, 
the heart of Paul is that everyone should submit themselves to the ruling authority. Now, when we look at chapter verse 1 of chapter 13 of Romans, we see that Paul is saying, let every soul subject itself to the ruling authority. So it is very clear here that Paul is not talking about any authority. The context of this text, it's not just any authority. It's not about parental authority. It's not about church authority. It's about the rulers. The the Greek word exosia that has been used in this uh, in this uh, chapter, in, uh, it's the same as the one that is in the book of Luke, chapter twelve, verse eleven, where 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 Jesus told the disciples, "When you are taken to the authorities and rulers, when you are brought before them, do not look for something to say. The Holy Spirit is going to give you how you are going to defend yourself." So when we are talking about the ruling authorities, we are talking about the, the political rulers, the people that were managing the, 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 the society at that particular time. And today, if we, if we want to, uh, to apply this, then we are talking about the authorities that, are, that have been placed, uh, perhaps the executive uh, arm of the government, we are talking about the legislative arm of the government, we are talking about the judiciary arm of the government, we are talking about law enforcers, that is the police officers, we are talking about the local authorities, that those are the chiefs, the assistant chiefs, the elders in the village, those are the people that we are talking about. We are also talking about those who are uh, the employers, the people who employ uh, who employ us in, uh, in, in, in organizations and all that. So those are the people that we are looking at in this chapter. These are the ones that I'm calling the government, the governing authority, authorities. And Paul says that uh, in verses 2, uh, when he says that every soul, let every soul be subject to the ruling authorities, he's talking about everyone. Remember, the text is being written to Christians. So even the Christians were supposed to submit themselves to the ruling authorities. Christians ought to submit themselves to the ruling authorities of our days. And in verse 2, he says, For there is no authority except from God, and those that, and those that exist have been instituted by God. There is no authority that exists that is not permitted by God. There's no authority that exists that has not been instituted by God. Every authority flows from God. And here there are people who may ask, what about those that are unjust rulers? What about those that are not good rulers? I want us to remember Paul is writing at at a time when the Christians are facing persecutions. So the rulers at that time were not good. They were not Christians. They were heathens, they were unbelievers, but he's saying we submit to them. Then the other thing to realize is that uh, when we are talking about authority being instituted by God, there is a difference between position and the person in authority. And God has instituted the position of leadership. And that leadership has to be sat by somebody, somebody has to be on that chair of that in that position. Now, what happens is that if that person who is in the rulership position is not adhering to godly uh, ways, then it is God who deals with them. It is not men who deal with kings. It is God who deals with kings. And I want this to be very clear in our minds, that it is God who deals with king. In the book of Proverbs, uh, Proverbs chapter 8 and verse 15, the Bible says that it by me kings reign and rulers decree justice. So it is by God that kings are able to reign and they are answerable to God. Whatever they do, they are answerable to God. And therefore, even David himself, he had had these... uh, he had this revelation. When Saul was running after him, already uh, Saul, God had regre- regretted why he chose, he chose Saul as a king. And he's running after David. David has already been anointed as, as, the, as the next king of Israel. But God has not put Saul away completely from the seat. 
and Saul goes to a cave where the where David is hiding and David had an opportunity to do bad to Saul but he only cut the corner of the crook of 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 Saul and then afterwards the heart of David smit as uh, a small team because he had cut he had done something wrong to the anointed of God and that is why David says do not i'm not supposed to be touching the anointed of God was Saul good he wasn't but David respected the position of leadership that God had placed Saul on therefore we are saying this no rulership that has not been bestowed by God and the question we i want us to ask ourselves why do we need to obey our earthly rulers why do we need to obey the people that are ruling us the people that are enforcing the rule the, and and even the rule makers themselves why do we need to obey them and verse uh, 3 says therefore whoever resists the authority resists what god has appointed and those who resist will incur judgment there is a judgment that comes when we do not adhere to the authorities that have been given to us in the time of paul the judgment would have been very very severe it would have even been a persecution of christians and therefore paul is telling them whoever does not obey the whoever resist the authority will incur judgment so one of the reasons why we have to obey is that we may avoid the judgment that comes with anybody who does not uh, subject themselves to the authority if you go against authority there's judgment that is rightly to come upon you and i would i would want to say if if we continue um in verse 3 the bible says for rulers are not terror to good conduct but to bad would you would you have no uh, fear of the one who is in authority then do what is good if you want to uh to live peacefully with the people with the authorities that are there then we need to do what is the right thing we need to do what uh the law is saying and god is expect that the rules that are put down by the rulers they are there for our good they are there to bring order they are there to bring sanity into a society if everybody was left to do what whatever they they needed to do then we would not live peaceably with everybody people will steal from each other people will kill each other people will not have anything to fear so authority is an object of fear that god has placed so that we don't do wrong because we fear that authority and therefore when we continue uh we see that in verse 4 that authority the people in authority are god's servants for our good they are god's servant for our good we need to to realize that authority is there it is kept for the good of human beings how we correlate with each other how we continue to stay and to interact with each other it's for our good and that is god's order god loves order and therefore he has put the authority to bring order and he continues to say that he carries out god's wrath on the wrong doer when we do not when we do not uh appear to the authorities then god expects that the authorities carry out the judgment that is why they they punish on behalf of god the disciplinas on behalf of god because god wants obedient obedient people and when we are not obedient he expects that the authorities also punish us and the bible tells us and paul tells them that we must be in subject in subjection to the authority not only to avoid god's wrath but also for the sake of conscience the second reason why we should obey it is because of good conscience when we are punished because of our own wrong doings then we are guilty we cannot be able uh to stand and 
tell the world that I'm being persecuted because of having faith in God. Even in the book of Peter, Peter exhorts the Christians that whenever you face punishment, uh, you face persecution, it this should be because of your faith in God, but it is not because of your wrongdoings. Therefore, whenever we are obeying the governing authorities, we are doing that so that we may have good conscience and also that we may have approval. We may have approval. In the book of 1 Timothy chapter 2, Paul exhorts Christians to pray for those that are in the rulership. And he says, because this is good, it is pleasing to God. And so that everybody may be saved. When we do not obey the authorities, we are not at peace. And when there's no peace, we will not be able to execute our mandate of preaching the gospel. Therefore, it is necessary that the ruling, the, the church, the Christians obey the government that is there in their time so that there is an approval and this approval assists us to continue propagating the gospel. When you look at the book of, uh, again, uh, 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 1, Paul is telling the slaves that they should be good, they should, be, they should honor their masters. And he tells them the reason why they should honor their masters is that they may not make the gospel to be, they, they, may, not, they may not make the gospel to be disgraced. As I earlier said, Paul wanted a peaceful environment for him to propagate the gospel. And this peaceful environment could only be gotten if Christians were submitting to the ruling authorities, to the people that are in authority over them. Therefore, it is very, very important that us as Christians, we continue adhering to God's uh, commandment about obeying our our, gov our government. The other thing that I want to say that concerning those that are not good, we we find that uh, Nebuchadnezzar, people may think that God only brings good people to rule, to rule over us. But we find that Nebuchadnezzar was raised by God. If you read in the book of Jeremiah chapter 27, the Bible says that God is the one who raised Nebuchadnezzar. And actually God says that whoever does not obey, the nations that do not obey Nebuchadnezzar, God is going to punish them. And he cautions the Christian, he, he cautions the, the people of Israel that they should not listen to the prophets, that we are telling them not to obey the ruling authorities. The, they should not listen to the people that we are telling them not to obey Nebuchadnezzar. And therefore, God may raise kings, God may raise rulers to execute his purpose on people. His purpose could be good. Sometimes his purpose is a punishment. And therefore God may raise a leader, a ruler, in order for him to execute his will, his purpose, onto his own people. And therefore when their rulership has been put into place, God calls us uh, to continue adhering to what they have given to us. I want to end by saying that uh, rulership is from God. Governing authorities are ministers of God. In verse 6, for because of this, you also pay taxes, for the authorities are ministers of God attending to this very thing. That even God expects not only that we obey them, but our obedience should even go to our responsibilities that we have towards the government. 
And our responsibility is to pay taxes. Our responsibility is to assist the, govern the governing authorities, the people in authority to continue running the nations, running the, the, the society. And how do they do it? By using whatever taxes that we ought to give. Therefore, at all levels, the Christians are supposed to be on the forefront, fulfilling the mandates, fulfilling the rules, fulfilling the rules that have been kept, have been put by those people that are in authority. In First Peter, chapter two and verses seventeen, First Peter chapter two and verse uh, seventeen. We see also Paul talking about authorities. And he says, Honor all men. Love the, brother, the brotherhood. Fear God. Honor the king. Verse 18, he says, Servants, be in subjection to your masters with all fear, not only to the good and gentle, but also to the unjust. Peter is reiterating the same thing that we should be subject we should be subjected to our masters with all fear not only to the good and the gentle not to, to only to those that are, are 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 on our side but even to those that are unjust for this is acceptable if for conscience toward towards god a man endures griefs suffering wrongly for this is gracious thing it is the pleasing thing it is the acceptable thing when mindful of god one endures sorrows while suffering unjustly should you suffer unjustly then it's upon god but we should be subjective to the ruling authorities verse 9 20 for what glory is it if you if when you sin and are beaten for it, you endure. But if when you do good and suffer for it, for it, you endure. This is a gracious thing in the sight of God. What I want to say is that Christians ought to be subjective to the ruling authorities. Everyone, not just Christians, but everyone. We are not above what God has instituted. Yes, we are above the law if we do good. We are above the law if our faith helps us to do even much far better than the law has provided. That is when we are above the law. And that means that at all times, Christians ought to be at peace with the ruling authorities at that particular time. But should our freedom in Christ take us away from obeying the authorities, then it is not going to produce the fruits that are supposed to be bore by the, Christ, uh, by the gospel that we preach. The gospel we preach is the, is the gospel of peace. The gospel that we preach is the gospel of honor. It is the gospel that brings uh, brings uh, people even to come nearer to God. And actually Paul tells Timothy that teach with all patience those who oppose you. You teach them with a lot of patience in case that others listen to you, they are attracted to your gospel and they give their lives to Christ. So whenever as Christians we are addressing our authorities, we ought to address them with a lot of patience because the underlying purpose is to win them over to God. Those that are not born again, we win them over to God. Those that are believers, we direct them, we guide them, we support them in the ruling. So may the Lord help us, may the Lord guide us, may the Lord uh, help us to be obedient and honoring them. Honor is about 
what attitude we have towards our leaders. In the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 11, the Bible says in verse 10, the Bible says, do not curse a king, no, not even in your thought. And therefore, even the way we think about them, not just what we talk, even what we think about them, it is very, very important in the sight of God. So Christians, may God help us, may God uh, continue to teach us on how to relate with the systems that are there and how we continue to relate with the leaders that God has given us. God bless you. Amen.